Our next speaker, next we welcome a woman who has worked tirelessly to protect animals and the environment. She's been an active member of Occupy Dallas and has recently been involved with the efforts to stop the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, she's going to talk to us about the tar sands blockade and eminent domain, and this is Tammy Carson. And I just want to say, in addition to that, that she's a very selfless, very dedicated person who does a lot without trying to get herself any of the credit that she might be due for it, which is a thing I certainly respect. Here, here. <laughs> While Tammy's coming up, I just wanted to give you a message from the prisoners, and they wanted to let you know that if anybody wants seconds, they're there at your service, and so go ahead on through, and here's Tammy. I'm so happy to be here tonight with friends and fellow activists, and I'll be speaking about eminent domain. Eminent domain is, quote, the power to take private property for public use by a state, municipality, or private person or corporation authorized to exercise functions of public character following the payment of just compensation to the owner of that property, unquote. And TransCanada has done just that. They've basically stolen land from landowners all over East Texas to build a Keystone Pipeline. The Keystone Pipeline it will cover 1,700 miles stretching from Alberta, Canada to Port Arthur, Texas. By claiming common carrier status, they have successfully taken land that they should not have been able to take. Common carrier, quote, offers its services to the general public under license or authority provided by a regulatory body, unquote. In Texas, a common carrier has a power to condemn land with little oversight. To earn the designation of common carrier, an oil company only has to claim uh, the status on a one-page form submitted to the Texas Railroad Commission, which regulates pipelines. So I'm going to give you a few examples of people who have had their land taken. In Paris, Texas, Julia Trigg Crawford, who owns 650 acres, fought TransCanada in court. She never signed a contract with TransCanada or took any money from them. But because they claim common carrier status, they won. Uh, Ms. Crawford's counsel argued that TransCanada could not be a common carrier because it carried diluted bitumen, not crude oil, because the Keystone Pipeline had not been granted a federal permit, and because the pipeline company had not negotiated in good faith. Basically, they're lying to people about what's coming through the pipeline. In a 15 word ruling sent from his iPhone, Judge Bill Harris of Lamar County Court upheld TransCanada's condemnation of a 50 foot strip across Ms. Crawford's land. She was served with a writ of possession by TransCanada the morning before the judge's ruling came down. Another example Michael Bishop owns 20 acres in Douglas, Texas, 160 miles north of Houston, where he lives with his wife and daughter. Initially, he fought the company's attempt to condemn his land, but he couldn't afford the $10,000 lawyer's fee. He settled under duress, but later he decided to defend himself, so he has filed a lawsuit in Austin against the Texas Railroad Commission, which oversees the pipeline, arguing that it failed to properly investigate the pipeline and protect groundwater, public health, and safety. Another example, which is a little more, um, more well-known, is Eleanor Fairchild of Winsboro, Texas. She bought her property when her husband retired as an oil industry geologist. The pipeline will permanently bisect the 300-acre ranch, which includes undeveloped wetland areas, natural springs producing over 400 gallons of fresh water per minute from her property, so Ms. Fairchild has not been in favor of the pipeline since she became aware of TransCanada's plans years ago. She never signed a contract, and TransCanada expro expropriated her ranch through Texas eminent domain legal proceedings. She turned down the one-time settlement offer, and um, I was with her the day that TransCanada began clearing her land. The, the Feller Bunchers, it was a, early on a Sunday morning, and we were sitting on her patio having coffee, and we heard this awful, awful sound, and we knew what it was. They had already begun, the fellow bunches had already begun clearing the trees. It was, it was sickening. She and actress Daryl Hannah were arrested on Eleanor's property for trying to stop TransCanada. 
Maybe you've seen pictures. They stood in front of the heavy machinery with their hands up in the air telling them to stop. And it, it didn't work. Eleanor was charged with criminal trespass being on her own property. And she, along with, with 28 others of us, have been charged with a slap suit by TransCanada. Slap suit means a strategic lawsuit against public participation. And what this means is it's a lawsuit that's intended to censor, intimidate, and silence critics by burdening them with the cost of a legal defense until they abandon their opposition. TransCanada has also threatened landowners who have changed their mind about turning over property to TransCanada for construction. The corporation faces multiple lawsuits for doing this to landowners. And the stories go on and on. Landowners, ranchers, farmers, who are lied to and coerced into signing away their land, sometimes land that's been in their family for years, with the threat of having all of their land confiscated. And the bitumen that will be pushed through these inadequate pipes is not crude oil. It's the consistency of peanut butter being diluted with, with poisonous chemicals, one of them is benzene, and other chemicals that have not been disclosed. Um, an example, in, 2000, in July 2010, a pipeline carrying tar sands ruptured and spilled nearly a million gallons of diluted bitumen into the Kalamazoo River. Two years later, the cleanup is still not finished, and a 40-mile stretch of the river remains closed to the public. This pipeline has the potential to be the worst environmental dis disaster to date. A number of environmental groups are speaking out against the pipeline. The Sierra Club, 350.org, I Don't Know More, Rising Tide, and a group that I'm associated with, the Tar Sands Blockade. Yay! We do nonviolent direct action and acts of civil disobedience. We hold rallies and marches, street theater and skits to help alert the public about what's going on. We assist landowners with support. There was a tree sit for 80 days to block the pipeline. We chain ourselves to equipment to shut down their facilities. And uh, this past Monday, we disrupted business as usual at the offices of TransCanada in Houston. <laughs> and most recently, in an act of solidarity, um, eight students in uh, Massachusetts chained themselves together and super glued their hands together <laughs> in TransCanada's offices to show justice. So I want to urge you all to investigate this most dangerous and disastrous pipeline. And then join us. Let your voice be heard. Stand up and say, this is not okay. This is our Earth. We have one planet. We have, we have the power to make this a better place. And we owe it to our children and grandchildren to do that.